Hi, I'm Lansing Mayor Andy Shore. Welcome to our Walking Wednesday here on the west side of the city of Lansing. Uh, we're starting here at the Letts Community Center, named for Richard and Olivia Letts, two uh, incredible citizens here in the city of Lansing. Uh, Mrs. Letts just passed a few months ago, um, but we're excited to, to show the west side. It's just a wonderful area, a diverse, eclectic area um, with some incredible neighborhoods, an incredible community. So you're gonna get to, to hear all kinds of exciting, fun things today in our Walking Wednesday tour as we explore the west side with the West Side Neighborhood Association and many folks who are actively involved here. So welcome, and I'm excited for the day. Formerly known as the Kingsley Community Center, um, I remember coming here as a kid, walking uh, all the way down Kalamazoo from Everett Drive area, and walking up here it was so overwhelming to come here, but it was wonderful to have a community center right in our neighborhood that offered programming to the youth. Let me give you a sneak peek of inside. Excuse our mess. We are currently moving in. We just moved in early uh, July, so the office for the Department of Neighborhoods and Citizen Engagement will be housed here at the Let's Community Center. So I'll give you a sneak peek of what's inside prior to our open house, which will be later this fall. If you are like me and you remember coming up here as a kid for Let's uh, programming, Kingsley programming, <laughs> You remember coming into the community room right here, which also features a window for the kitchen. This is one of our community rooms that we offer a free meeting space for community organizations and uh, local organizations just want to have a place to meet with each other. So down the hall, we have the gymnasium. We have, uh, I'll show you where our, our main office is located. You've got the main counter, which if you walk in, you'll see our department admin and operations specialist will be sitting right there. Then we have our main office right here for DNCE. And around this corner, we have the Olivia Letts Conference Room. So as you walk out of the back of Letts, you'll see you can access the playground, which is right in between Riddle Elementary School and the Letts Community Center. But if you look right over here, there's a nice gazebo, and you've got a couple of public grills you can use. So families utilize these grills over the summertime, come up here, barbecue here at Letts, play at the playground, and it's just a wonderful experience. I want to introduce Mitzi Allen, and Mitzi is going to actually take us on a tour of the West Side. So, hi, Mitzi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you today? Fine, fine, I'm fine, and I'm just happy to do this. The West Side is just a wonderful place to live, and we have so many gyms here. I'm just pleased to be your tour guide today to take you to some of them. We can't highlight everything, but we have so many things. The West Side now has approximately 2,000 houses and 25 subdivisions within the boundaries. Um, so we're just gonna highlight some of these today. So the residents are waiting to talk with us about that house. So come on, let's walk. We've arrived now at the Darius Moon House. As you look at the house and you think about the stick style, the sticks that we see in the burgundy color are supposed to outline what the structure of the house is behind it. But what he did is um, he made it look like three stories and there are actually six windows that are in the attic. And they're, they're, the windows that are in the attic are on the floor. So if I stand in the tower there, my feet are at the bottom of the window and I'm taller than the window. And so it's a very, very small little tower area. And on the second floor, my office is behind the window here, the very large one. The bottom of the window is the floor level. And that window must be five feet tall or a little more than five feet tall. So it's really intriguing how he was making it look like more than it really is by putting the windows in the attic and designing all the sticks and all the trim so that they highlight that difference. And they're beveled windows, right? Uh, some of them are, some have uh, lead and glass of different colors inside. What you see on the outside is storm windows. In the 1970s, I think when the uh, family was restoring the house, they put storm windows up to make it a little more energy efficient. The home was moved here about four blocks in the 1970s from uh, over on 
Logan Street, which is now Martin Luther King, between Allegan and Michigan. And there's an empty lot there where, where it is, was moved from. And it took them all day to move it just three blocks down the street. All the wires had to come down to make room for the house to pass under. And um, at that time, a family bought the house and put it here and spent a lot of money restoring the house and trying to protect it and preserve it for the future. Okay, so Tom, tell me how it feels to live in a, in a historic home. Do you get a lot of residents stopping to know about the house? Is there a story that you want to share? Um, people do s drive by very slowly hey, a lot of, it. yeah, a lot of times. And um, my office in the home is upstairs with a window looking out over the street. So I very often see people taking their time driving by, people taking photographs. It, you know, it is a really beautiful building and we're so happy that we've been able to take care of it during this time period. We've given it a five color paint job using historical colors that would have been the type used on houses back in the late 1800s and had quite a process for selecting the paint colors and trying to figure out which colors go where okay. on, the, on the house. That was a lot of fun too. It's just been really a fun project for us. So thank you very much, Tom, for showing us your home and thank talking you. about it. It's very informative and uh, we look forward to coming back again. Okay. Thank you. So now we're off to our next home, which is down on Jenison. in this area before? The last time I think I really hung on this area, I was a teenager riding my bike through the area, so I don't know much about the area. Beautiful homes over here, beautiful homes. Over there you see the landscape, we have lots of mature trees, and just brick historic homes that have been here since 1935 and before. Your home was selected because it is a gym. Thank you. It's a gym, and because, you know, and Mr. Taylor was one of the first black Marine, mm, yeah. and we would like to hear about that and about the things that you have find the value of your home. And just tell us about your home. Mm -hmm. How long have you been here? Well, I, I bought the home in 2014, but um, I've been here in and out most of my life. Mm -hmm. And so um, my sister and I, we were raised here um, from little girls. Right, we came right. here after 496, the highway, right? After the highway, after Lansing or Oldsmobile came in with the 496, this is where our family migrated, was over to the west side. You had a lot of people who moved to the south side. Our family opted to move to the west side. Um, in 2014, I bought the home from my parents, and um, I've done a lot of remodels, but just a little history. Um, the house was built in 1940, and um, it had several um, owners, which we didn't know. It, it actually had about six um, different families um, that deeded on this house or had a deed for this home. And it's pretty interesting because for years I thought we were the second owners to the Munson family, O.J. Munson and his wife. And so um, when I did a little history, I was surprised to find out, first of all, that McPherson, William McPherson, who lived in Howe, Michigan, has the McPherson Mansion, which was known as like the ghost house. Well, it was his family that started the McPherson Heatherwood subdivision. And this is what this we're part of. And this is a part of that. We ha This house sits on three lots, um, 155, 156, and 157. And um, it has the original slate floors. And so, I mean, it has a lot of character. It has two fireplaces that were converted to electric. Mm -hmm. right. And so, um, really great home. We love it here on the west side. Yeah. Now, you moved in in 65. 65, yes. And back then, mm -hmm. it wasn't possible for blacks to obtain mortgages. That's correct. As a matter of fact, my parents bought the home on a land contract. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, they paid $135 a month. Mm -hmm. Until the land contract was, you know, official, mm -hmm. and I actually had the original deeds, but that didn't come along until 1984. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. it was. It was kind of, I think, at that time that some places did open up on the west side, 
we just happen to be able to, as a family, get in, and I'm going to contribute that to two working parents. That did help because at that time, again, 496 yes. took our home. Yeah. Took Literally, they took our home, and they only had so long to be able to move into this neighborhood. So we, we, we were given an opportunity to do so. I mean, the, the building, when they built these homes, they built gyms. Very mm -hmm. deep. Lots. Do yes. you garden or I do garden. I have a full garden. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Oh, Absolutely. Here, garden. let me open up. When the highway came through, they came over here, and that's the time that they purchased this home. Right, right. And um, my dad loved sharing the stories about his time at, in the war, good and bad, because he did not have the best times in World War II. North Fort Point Marines was the name of his um, platoon. And again, it was World War II, and they were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. They went to Washington um, and was presented that by um, President Obama. That was one of the best highlights of Dad's life. Thank you ladies very much for the tour and telling us the history of the West Side as you relate to it and uh, for showing off your lovely home. Thank you so All right. much. All right. Appreciate it anytime. Thank, Thank you. you so much. West Thank you, side. everyone. West Side is the best side. <laughs> have arrived at St. Joe Park. This is just a gym on the west side. It's found on the western border of um, the west side neighborhood. And she's going to tell us about the many features of this park and why we feel so fortunate to have it within our neighborhood. In 1907, before the land was sold to the city, um, William McPherson and his family owned it. Now, although the McPherson family lived in Howell, they owned uh, lots of land um, all over the state and in the U.S. So um, the McPhersons owned about 200 acres um, between St. Joseph Street and um, Michigan Avenue, which is on the other side of Sexton High School. Records reflect that traveling show acts appeared at the grounds here, uh, such as the Ringling Brothers and the um, Wild Wild West Buffalo Bill Show. <laughs> when William McPherson died in 1915, um, his family uh, took ownership and created a real estate agency. And in 1945, they sold the land that is now St. Joseph Park to the city of Lansing for only a dollar. Emily, let's walk around and see some of the things that are uh, featured in the park. Perfect. It is a largely open field to accommodate open play. In the 50s and 60s, it was home to all the residents for ice skating. I remember that a lot of kids used to come up here to play basketball and softball. Is the softball diamond still here? Yes, uh, the softball diamond is still here. Let's and, walk over that way. And kids regularly still come out to the basketball courts and love to play on it. The size of this park to be a sure. neighborhood park is quite uh, is quite large. It's 18.8 acres of land here, and it's yes. lightly shaded, so it gives you a lot of activities that you can do here: kite flying, just relaxing, <laughs> picnics, tennis. There's a lot of activities that are held here, and so now we're going to walk over to the Forbes Power Station on Fourth Street. That's a unique building, all of its own, and. We're going to meet Chris there uh, to talk about it. Thank you so very much for coming. Enjoy. It's very beautiful over there as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. So as this area built up, we realized that we needed to get something to serve the neighborhood instead of the long, uh, lower voltage lines we had coming from uh, from Eckert and from, from Ottawa. Uh, back in the day, it was called Morris Park. Mr. Eckert was the general manager at the time. Um, so uh, this substation was built to, uh, to support those increased loads. And um, 
We purchased the property in 1936, started, got the design done, got it built you know, starting in 1936 and completed it in 1937. Uh, so what the substation does is it takes those high voltage lines which are 13,000 volts and we transform them down to 4,000 volts and then distribute it on like the overhead lines around us uh, to the neighborhood picking up, you know, serving all the homes. Uh, so as our distribution system has grown and, and the systems evolved, VWL has been able to upgrade the voltage on our pole lines to that higher 13,000 volts. So we no longer needed to have uh, that transformation from 13,000 down to 4,000 at this substation. Um, and that increases the efficiency, which also reduces the cost of moving electricity. So, you know, decreases the cost also to our customers. And since we no longer needed the substation, we started uh, con converting the lines to the higher voltage, moving them out of Forbes substation, and we completed that project in 2016. So nothing is running in here? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And have you put it on the market? I know that it's, uh, that there's been conversations with people at the city that and it's available. And what do you think of building this like this would sell for? Oh. I, I don't expect that it would be extremely expensive. It was expensive just, to build it. It was, it was. But, you know, we recognized that, you know, it was built for a specific purpose and people would have to do a lot of renovation. It does have a, a, a yard in the back, uh, so it is, you know, from a lot, it does have some additional room besides just the, the building itself. Yeah, we talk about this building a lot and mm. we have never showcased it in any way, so we're very happy to do that today. And yes. thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. So now we're getting ready to go to Sexton. Welcome to J.W. Sexton High School, home of the Big Reds. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm happy to have Derek Quinney join me to talk about Sexton. Derek is currently the Ingham County Register of Deeds. Yep, and a former student here at Sexton also. Had the opportunity to attend Sexton my sophomore year. Um, but uh, uh, when uh, they built Harry Hill High School is when they um, changed the boundaries and what have you. And I attended Hill my two years. But I will say that I regret, I regret not having finished up here at Sexton because this is truly an anchor and a treasure here on the west side of Lansing. Uh, my rearing growing up here in the city of Lansing or whatever, everybody wanted to come to Sexton. You went to West Junior, the transition was Kalamazoo Elementary or Main Street Elementary, uh, West Junior, and then Sexton. Uh, so I did have an opportunity to go there and I was able to don the Big Reds uh, football and basketball uniforms as well. So this is truly a gem here on the west side. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Jay, uh, Sexton was the uh, superintendent here in the city of Lansing for 25 years. He held that position. This was constructed while he was in that position. Uh, not only was it when constructed an engineering marvel, but it was also an architectural marvel as well. You'll note some of the uh, artwork and so forth that was crafted in here. Some of the sculptures around the building or whatever that are just absolutely phenomenal. Things that you'd be hard pressed uh, to replicate nowadays, even with technology. The sculptures around the building the, depict various uh, cultures and such. There is art, there is law, there is the labor groups, there is uh, some athletic stuff on the uh, various pieces around here, whatever. So this is truly, truly one of the gems here in the city. I'd be uh, truly disappointed if, in fact, this is not designated a historical site at some point in time. When it was finally um, built in 1956, uh, the cost of this facility was a little over $2 million. In today's numbers, it's $26 million that would have cost to build this facility right here. So inside the place, one of the things that I want to highlight is the terrazzo floor, which encases the uh, Michigan seal. Uh, that too is something that's pretty unique uh, to this specific uh, site as well. So this is absolutely amazing what's going on here and I don't know how we could not include this or if in fact <laughs> with the educational system now, should this no longer become a, 
a, a school uh, that they repurpose it for something else because it is just uh, architectural as well as an engineering gym. Well, next on our mini stops is formerly fire station number seven. It was designed by Edwin Baud, our local hero of architecture. Um, it was built in 1925, and it has the twin across town on Pennsylvania and Oakland uh, that is the former number six. Um, so that was built before this one. It was number six, this is number seven. Um, and that one is also used as a family home. It was used as a fire station until 2010. So it was put on the market in 2014, and that's when we saw it. And uh, the city was selling three different fire stations at the same time, um, and this was one of them. And we, we saw it, and it didn't cost more than a regular house. <laughs> um, so we were thrilled and we bought it. Um, it's it's lovely. It's really fun to live in. I always dreamed of living someplace that would be fun like this. Uh, my husband and I both are the sort of people that always thought we would want to live in an old school or an old church. Um, and so when this was possible, uh, it, it was just, I, I still, I don't get to, I don't believe that I get to live here. Um, it's, you know, you can see that it's like in the style of a, like a California type bungalow. It looks just like a bungalow, except it's too big. So it's a little bit like being uh, a Lego minifigure living in a Playmobil house. So, so being a corner house, do you have a lot of privacy on the outside? More than you'd think. Do you? Um, because most people are on their way somewhere and not stopping to, to chat uh, or to look. Um, we do get people that will stop and look at Sarah Michelle Geller in the window. They'll just stop and look. And, and my husband works right there so he can see people when they stop and do that. But um, it also, it, it started out as just being a replacement for a curtain. We didn't have a curtain right when we moved in. And it was this silly thing that someone had given him as a gift years okay. ago. So it was the last thing out of the old house and the first thing into the new house. And so we just said, this fits. The main floor here, uh, most of it is one big room. It is it's got high ceilings. The truck would come in and park here, and there's still tape on the floor marking where the truck should stop. Um, and so this whole front is one large room. Um, it has the red square tile that you see like in restaurants. And then in the back of the house, there is a small bathroom, a kitchen, um, the stairs, you know, the access to the stairs and, and uh, kind of a utility area. The, the house does have a full basement. Does it? it does, which is shocking because there was a fire truck parked on top of it. Upstairs was the dormitory area, so there's also one large room. And when we go to the side of the house, you can see that there are rows of small windows up there, and originally each of those windows was one tiny room that was just big enough to put a twin bed in. For the firemen? For the firemen, okay. yep. Is the pole still there? Yes, yes, I should have. That's the first question everyone asks. Yes, the pole is still there. It's um, probably... Invisible. At least 20 feet tall. Yes. Yes. Have you, have you used it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My husband jokes that since our bedroom is upstairs and he works downstairs, that that's his commute in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun when kids come to visit. <laughs> and grown-ups, too. I was reading some of the brick on the inside of this hose tower, mm -hmm. and to just see those bricks that old. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you have any idea when this fire station was built? Yes, 1925. Okay. Yes, and and the the brick. I think there's some bricks with imprints on them inside the tower. Yeah. Um, yes, I saw those. Yeah, and those may have come from other, been recycled from other buildings. I mean, I know you started out with Darius Moon today, yes. and and like what a wonderful architect, and mostly did residential things in the Queen Anne style. And uh, and to contrast, you have Edwin Bowd, who did mostly commercial, public, you know, institutional buildings. I don't know if he ever did any residences. Um, so it, the, I mean, who gets to live in an Edwin Bowd house? No one, no okay, one. Okay. Um, so uh, we feel like we're a little, we get to be a little bit more personal with that architect than most people ever get to be, and, and that's wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much. We yeah, have thank you. one other house to go to, and we're going to highlight the Sears kit homes. It's a lot of them over Oh, here. yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So we're going to find out just a little about that 
And the next time we come, plan for us staying here a little longer. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you so much. Thank you. We have arrived at Joan's house. Joan is fortunate enough to have one of the Sears kit houses that she's going to tell us about. Kit houses were prevalent in the 1920s. Sears came out with the kit house. They weren't the only ones that came out with the kit house. Um, there's also a place out of Bay City called Aladdin. And how I discovered this was when I bought the house um, about, I don't know, a little over 25 years ago. And I had lived in another house in the neighborhood prior. But the lady who lived here said, this house was built on house plans, blah, 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 to such and such a magazine. And I was like, okay, fine. Well, then I'm riding around, and over on Ottawa, there's a house that looks like this, only it has the original siding. And if you look back at my garage, you would see that it has shaker shingles. So the house was all shaker shingles. And, um, and of course, over time, people change stuff. But pretty much everything is original. The other thing I learned about Sears Homes is that you could also order like all your light fixtures, everything. And the only thing they wouldn't ship was like cement or brick. Um, it wasn't, what's, that, what's the delivery thing we have now? What's an Amazon? <laughs> One of the characteristics of a Sears home is the wood trim because this, they were made to be put together by individuals as well right. as builders. Right. And not only did they sell the, how, the kit, they start financing the kit. And oh, yeah. then they start financing the, the lot. They yeah. started financing the lot. And on the application, it didn't ask for employment. Or color. Or, yeah, race. No ethnicity. So therefore, it made, the, um, made them available to people who didn't qualify for a mortgage. The Heatherwood subdivision had to have awnings on the porch when it was built in the 30s required and it's made into the seller's agreements and everything for their awnings. Now we utilize those porches to drink wine and coffee <laughs> and beverage. to beverage and to visit with one another. When you're walking down the street, you can just stop where, wherever anyone is gathered and just blend in. This is a partying community. We look for reasons to join on the porches. Um, 2,000 houses, so you've just seen, and none of this, this is not a cookie cutter neighborhood. If you wanted to live in, when you come to the west side, what you're gonna find is tree-lined streets, homes that are lived in, uh, neighbors, homes with curb appeal, neighbors that talk to you and come out with you, and I like the diversity. The houses is just as diverse as the residents here. I am so happy that you took time out of your day to walk with me, to witness what we've seen. And please come back again on your spare time. Come over and look at the many things that were not highlighted today. Thank you again for joining us.